All right. First Team Boom call of 2016. I wanted to look this up. Uh, the date to sign up for the Success Club Cruise. I think that's super important that everyone gets that on their calendar because the moment that is up, it's going to sell out. And you don't want to get on the wait list because you're not going to get off it. Does anybody know the date and time to sign up for that 2017 Success Club trip in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic? This is 2017 in uh, April 2017. But you can earn that trip, basically have it, the whole thing paid for during 2016. But you got to sign up for it right now. Not right now, but this month. Does anyone know the time? Okay, January 19th. And so just circle that date. We'll get you the exact time. You're going to want to like be at your computer. If you have a friend that can like sign on their computer and pretend to be you too, so you have a double chance of getting that before it goes on the wait list, that's even better. 11 a.m. Eastern on January 19th. Perfect. Okay, uh, a couple other announcements. Uh, January Challenge Pack deals. Oh, it's noon. It's noon Eastern on, on January 19th. Okay. Um, all right. January Challenge Pack sales. Uh, hammer Chisel on sale for 160 Day three today, I think I almost died. That is killer. I'm loving it. Uh, 21 day fix and fix extreme on sale this month for 140. Boom. Um, that's it for the announcements there. Um, recognition. I kind of have like, there's 10 coaches I want to recognize and then I'm going to do the weekly, uh, recognition that I always do. But I just wanted to start with these 10, uh, coaches on team boom. So first one. I uh, wanted to recognize Pete Realman, my dad, uh, one star diamond. I wanna, I'm recognizing all the, the star diamond coaches. Um, so my dad's one star diamond, working his butt off, one of the hardest workers I've ever met. Um, I wa also want to recognize Maurice Sardelli, one star diamond, uh, one of the strongest leaders on Team Boom. Alyssa Sardelli, two star diamond coach who earned – uh, her way to the new leadership retreat that's later this month in LA with corporate and some of the top uh, new leaders. Caroline Nathan, also two star diamond, earned her way to that new leadership retreat at the end of this month. And she was a 2015 premier coach. Amy Morgan, two star diamond or three star diamond, I believe also earned her way to the new leadership retreat at the end of the month and was a premier coach as well. Terry Bocklet, three-star diamond coach, she earned a trip to the new leadership retreat in corporate or in LA with corporate and all of the top new leaders from 2015. So Team Boom is going to be represented very well. Michelle Phillips, six-star diamond coach. 2015 elite coach, less than 300 coaches out of 400,000 made elite. And Michelle was one of them. How cool is that? Amy Realman, five-star diamond coach, made elite. And she was ranked 88 out of 400,000 coaches. So something on Team Boom is working here. <laughs> other than the fact that she just works her ass off, right? We have, and then Andrea Wallace, three-star diamond coach, also earned her trip to the new leadership retreat at the end of the month. One of the strongest leaders on Team Boom, always right there at number three in, in team volume points and team cycle bonus, um, which is a reflection of, of her being such a strong leader and her coaches loving her. And last but not least, Beth Realman, three-star diamond, always right there at the top of Team Boom for team volume points. And in my opinion, the Team Boom secret weapon. Team Boom would not be what it is without her. 
So round of applause for the team, boom, star diamonds. Huge year 2015 that laid an amazing foundation for 2016. you, Pat. Yeah, Pat yeah, yeah. Was, and for Pat, Pat was ranked number two out of all of the men in Beachbody. And he was 137 out of all of Beachbody girls and guys. <laughs> so I thought that was huge. Thank you, yeah. And Team Lee, effort. right? Team and effort. Lee. Yeah. yeah. Top two out of all of the guys in Beachbody. That's pretty big. Yeah, it was cool. So that means, so three years in elite, that's, that means Team Boom has been elite three years now. And I don't think many teams in Beachbody can say that. Three consecutive years. That's pretty rare. So a round of, of applause for everybody on Team Boom. And like I said, 2015, super exciting. Take the time to give yourself a round of applause. applause. Really what we did in 2015 was lay that foundation to blow 2015 away in 2016. And that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm excited for that. So another round of applause. All right. Let's jump into this week's recognition. So uh, for the week of the last week of December, these actually for the whole month of December, I'm just going to read off the coaches that had that enrolled three or more coaches during December. So we have Kenny Kelly with three, Josh Morgan with three, Jillian Hilferding with three, Jill Wagner with three, Eddie Cristofano with three, and Amy Realman with five. And then the volume. So these are the coaches, the top 20 coaches as far as uh, total volume points. Um, with over 300 points, we got Cami DeSisio, Jill Lavati, Marie Sardelli, Leah Hall, Amy Realman, Bridget Moore, Chelsea Cata, and Sarah Chenin. With over 400, we got Ashley Feldenson, Andrea Wallace, Kim Williams, Nick Waltz, and Kim Kenny. Over 500, we got Joe Policino and Chris Bocklet. Over 600, we got Kelly Marks. Over 700, we got Melinda Hall, Caroline Nathan, Alyssa Sardelli, and myself. And then for December Success Club, these are the coaches that hit Success Club 10. We got Erica Ocampo. We got Danielle Ann, Ashley Feldenson, Nancy Nathan, Josh Morgan, Amy Morgan, Genevieve Lee, Jennifer Alvarez, Marie Sardelli, and Brooke Reed. With 11, we got Melinda Hall. With 12, Trip Knowles. With 14, Kenny Kelly. With 14, also Jill Wagner. Emily Crushore with 15. Kristen Stapp with 17. Caroline Nathan with 18. And Amy Realman with 19. All right. Um, if I didn't read your name off, that's okay. I'm sure I'm going to be reading your name off a lot in 2016, right? Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of other leaders on team boom that I, that I wanted to recognize those 10. I wanted to definitely do that. There's so many more that I didn't have the time to, um, but you guys are what makes this team tick all you diamonds and above. And there's so many leaders that aren't diamond yet that are about to just blow it up in 2016. Um, so I'm super excited for you guys. Uh, okay, so without further ado, let's kind of get back into the basics uh, of what is going to get your name on all these recognition lists during the year 2016. Uh, so Amy, the number 88 ranked coach in, the, in all of the organization, is going to chat a little bit about uh, what she does during her what we call a power hour. She's going to talk a little bit about what a power hour is, uh, what she does during that power hour each day to, to crush this business. And a little nuance we're going to add on to it to make it a little bit more fun and more productive. Um, so get your pen and paper ready. And uh, Amy, it's all yours. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to play music during this because that's what we've done before. But apparently if you play a real song, you can't upload it to YouTube because I tried uploading one yesterday and I got like, they wouldn't upload it because of music on it. So I don't know. We can't have music. Sorry. Amy, were you like planning on doing an actual power hour or just kind of like explaining to them about how to do it and how to like do it with other people? I can just explain how to do it, I guess. 
Yeah, I think that would be good. And then people can kind of ask questions. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so the, I'm going to – I'll share in the chat, I guess, what are the different topics are that we hit in a power hour. And I broke it down to the minute so that it would be exactly – one hour for you guys. Let's see. Okay. I guess I can just start by, so finding people, for some reason my Facebook, I guess I can share my screen, but all that you would do is go to your Facebook and hit on your friends. And for some reason mine doesn't show up, but your, all your friends should show up. And the ones at the top are your ones that you talk to frequently. But what you would do is your first 10 minutes, you would scroll down a few pages to people that are not beach body coaches or the ones you talk to the most. And all you're going to do for 10 minutes is you would take a piece of paper and a pen and you would just go and start writing names down. Don't think too, too much about it, whether you've talked to them or not, when the last time you have, um, whatever, just start writing names down. Hey, Amy, so can I say one thing about the power hour? Yeah. Um, you know, we always say like, treat your business like a business. And I think a lot of people don't really understand like what that means because they never owned a business. So I kind of, I like to say like, treat this like a job. Like if you guys, I'm sure most of you have had a job or have a job. Like when you have a job, you schedule everything around it. Having someone pick up your kids from school, whatever it is, you show up to your job and everything else, you figure it out. Yeah. So I would, this that's the same mentality you got to have with this business. You got to have a set time that you're going to show up to this job. Right. And so having a power hour is so important for that. Have that set time and then schedule everything else around it and guard that time. Just like you guard the time that you're at your job, because if you don't show up to your job, you're going to get fired. Yeah. If you don't show up to your power hour, you're not going to move this business forward. You're not going to be able to cross those things off your why list. Yeah, definitely. I mean, not everything on this list is going to be fun. Like there are definitely some things that you have to do that are you don't necessarily want to do every day, but these are the things that are going to move your business forward. And I compounded them into one hour. Um, I definitely recommend if you have more time than one hour, you could do one in the morning, one midday, one at night, or just one in the morning, one at night. Um, I think these have really been helpful for me and setting a timer. So get your phone out, set down, like Pat said, this is the time I'm doing my business hour and I'm going to show up to it. Treat it like it's an actual job and go in the other room away from your family. Let your family know that this time at this day is my power hour. And so everyone knows that, you know, you're at work. So all you're going to do is you would start with your Facebook friends list and just scroll down a few pages until you get to people that you don't talk to frequently. So for 10 minutes, all you're going to do is, you could even do this for five, but 10 minutes, write down, just write names for 10 minutes until your um, stopwatch goes off. So you're going to write down as many names as you can. Um, you should be able to get like anywhere from 20 to 40 names in 10 minutes because you're not thinking too much about it. You're not thinking, when's the last time I talked to them or whatever. You're just writing names down. The next step of what you would do is, I'm looking at my chat. Okay. So you're going to message and comment and like on some of their things. So I'll share my screen. And I would simply, I'll just pull up someone from my contact list. Okay. So I would, let's say these are the names that I had. I would simply just type their name in and hit enter. And I'm just going to go through and like, and for 10 minutes, I'm going to set my timer and I'm not going to get through all of these people probably, but that's, what's nice about it because tomorrow when you start, you already have a list of people to work from. So I'm just going to sit through and I would go through and I would like a few of her um, posts and I might comment on something or just like a few things. Maybe I could have something to say and then I would just message her. Um, and you can simply message reaching out, just saying like, Hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. I see you now work at, um, Equinox. Like how long have you been working there? Um, you could, you could say anything. So I've actually been talking to her right now, but, um, I invited her to a sneak peek group. So I actually hadn't talked to her in about a month and she never responded back to me. So on Monday I just said, 
Hey, Christy, how are things going? I wanted to let you know that I'm hosting a sneak peek group here on Facebook that started today for anyone that wants to just learn a little bit more about online health coaching, the cost, earning potential, time commitment, and all that. I just revamped it a bit and added some new things. I think you would make a great addition. Would you be interested in having me add you? Sure, I'd love to take a look. Yay, I will add you now. So that was on Monday. She's been in my sneak peek for two days, so I could simply say like, hey, Christy. So this kind of just happened that she's, I am talking to her consistently, but you would just go through and do this on anyone. So even if it's been a year since you've talked to them or you've never messaged them at all, you're just going to take a look at their page, like a few things and reach out and say, hi, you do not have to invite them to something. Um, you can simply reach out and then jot their name down to invite them to something later on or try and continue the conversation organically. Um, does anyone have any questions on that part? No. So, Amy, can you talk a little bit about like you set, um, you give like a set time of when you're going to do this power hour mm -hmm. and then you like message a bunch of coaches and say, Hey, I'm going to do a power hour on this day at this time. If you want to join me and we'll do this together, we'll put some music on and we'll kind of run through these things together. Is that how it works? And then you guys just all hop on a Zoom call together and then you kind of yeah, lead it? Been, yeah, I've been doing them for the past a couple of weeks now. And the way that I've been doing it, instead of, I explain it like this, but then I'm, I have been setting the timer and I say, okay, go. And then after the 10 minutes I'll, in the chat, I say, just comment in the chat, how many names did you write down? And most people are writing down, we're not doing a full 10 minutes because I try to keep the actual call an hour. So a few of the minutes are me explaining if it's the first time. And then most people are writing down like 20, 30 names or whatever. And then I say, okay, now I just explain how you do this. Okay, I'm going to set the timer for eight minutes, go through and start messaging people. And then in the chat, okay, how many names did you get through? Most people get through maybe only three if they're doing really quality conversation start or whatever, anywhere from three to 10 people that they're probably um, reaching out to. Cool. So that's the next step. And then, okay, so then the next step would be following up. So I personally believe, and this is just something that I do, I don't like to just sit in my inbox on Facebook and just constantly be messaging back and forth with people. I think that that is a draining of time and you're not going to get anywhere if you're just constantly back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you're not set on doing a task. So for me, if I have a 10 minute timer on doing follow-ups, I'm not going to respond back and forth to people as they message me. I'm going to go to my inbox and I'm going to scroll to the very bottom and I'm just going to work my way up for 10 minutes. If somebody messages me, I'm not going to respond to them at that moment. I'm going to just simply for 10 minutes, work my way up through the inbox. So that's what the 10 minutes of follow-ups are. You may not get through all of them in 10 minutes, but at least every day you're following up with people for 10 minutes, um, if that's all the time that you have. The next thing that I would do is this part If okay, so the next part is follow-ups. Okay, now we're gonna respond to messages. So we just did follow-ups for 10 minutes. And then the next thing you would do is go to the top and hit the more button and hit unread. So for 10 minutes, I'm gonna work through my inbox and start responding back to these people that are sitting here waiting for a response. I personally try to, res I personally respond to people within 24 to 48 hours, usually 24 hours. I try not to let a message that somebody took the time to message me sit there for more than 24 hours. But I also am not going to just sit and message back and forth forever. Like this message was from 9.52 in the morning. You do not have to respond to people right away. I just want to let, to let people know that. And that's just something for me personally. So like I don't sit and just message people back and forth forever. During my time, I would go through and get through the rest of these messages. So for 10 minutes, that would, is what you would do on your power hour. If you don't, if that doesn't take you a total of 10 minutes, then you can sit and continue to do follow-ups for those 10 minutes. Does that, does anyone have any questions on that part? I like that you always like start at the bottom. Like when you do follow-ups, you start at the bottom, work your way up. 
when you're responding to like the, the unread messages, you start at the bottom, work your way up. That way you're hitting the people that the most amount of time has gone by since you've talked to them. Yeah. And what was I going to say? Yeah, definitely. I don't remember. What I was just going to say now. Okay. So the next step would be adding new people and mess and reaching out to them. So what I personally do is I'm going to show you a few ways of doing that. Oh, and that what I was going to say is when you're doing the follow-up, sometimes you get to a message and you're like, I really don't have anything to say to them. Like, I'm not just going to message them again. So what I do is I just copy their name and I put them on a contact list because I don't want to message them again because I just talked to them like a week ago and they're not responding, but I also don't want to forget about them forever. So I put them on a contact list and then maybe in February, I will reach back out to them or I will add them to an interest group, which we are going to get to um, later on in the power hour. So I can keep track of them, but I'm not going to continue to message them if they're not like responding to me. Um, so yeah, that's definitely what I do. And I always have two Facebook tabs open because I like to, if I'm um, going to follow up with someone, so let's say I was going to follow up, I'm all the way down here and I was going, where am I? I was going to follow up with Katie. What I would like to do is have her copy her name and then I can go to another Facebook tab really quick and type her in. And maybe I can find something that I could message her about. So maybe like, I, I'm just like, I don't know, like maybe it was her birthday. Oh, it was like her mom's birthday. Or maybe she just got a promotion or whatever she did. So that way I can at least like a few of her things and interact on her page and then go to message her. Because like, what if this is like kind of morbid, but like, what if her grandma died? And then I'm like, hey, just checking in, like, wanted to see if you're buying a challenge back. Like, you want to make sure you're kind of looking at their page first before you go through and follow up with them again. So and I like to checking to see if it's like someone you actually do want to connect with. You know? Yeah. Like, you don't want to just be connecting with everybody and anyone. You want to exactly. be connected with people that have things in common with you. That's what makes it fun. Exactly. Um, okay, cool. So that is a follow up. Let me see if there's any questions in here. What's the difference between follow ups and responding? If she's archiving all messages, how, do, how are they in her inbox? So, I'm not archiving the messages that are in my inbox. Um, those are the ones that are just in my inbox. I don't arch. I mean, if I archive, then they're like gone from my inbox unless like you can research their name and it pops up. But I'm just simply, when I say follow ups, I'm going to the bottom of my inbox and working my way up. I personally don't like to have messages sitting in my inbox for longer than like a week and a half. Either I'm going to delete the conversation because I'm not really connecting with them. They're not going to be a good fit for me anyway, or they're not really responding. I'm not just going to have them sit there forever. I'm going to add them to a contact list. So I don't really have conversations that just sit in my inbox forever. I don't know if that is what you guys were saying. Um, yeah. Let's get through like all the things that you do during the power hour and then we'll do questions at the end. How about? Okay. So the next set would be connecting with new people. So in the beginning, we were finding people, but those were people that were already on our Facebook list. So we're going to connect with new people on Facebook. So what I personally do is I go to my Facebook person thing and I hit see all. Um, so you can see people you may know. Like obviously, like if they're not someone that you would connect with, you can go ahead and delete them. Um, and what I like to do is connect with people that are at least have a, a mutual friend with or something. So like this is an assistant manager. I have a, we have a ton of mutual friends. These are all people that live near me in Boston. Um, like she looks like a nice person. So I could add her as a friend. You can message them right away, but it might be better to have them accept the friend request and then go through and message people. Um, they might be more, I'm not sure. Some people have been saying both ways that they've had better success with just friending them and then going back and messaging once they accept and some like to message at the same time. So you could simply just go through and add like that and you can remove anyone that you don't want. So this is how you would be connecting with um, new people. When I do that, I, when I send them a, a friend request, I say, Hey, you popped up as a suggested friend, I sent you a friend request. I hope that's okay. Yeah. I usually, if I do message them, I say, 
Um, hey, I saw you pop up as a suggested friend, so I figured I would reach out. Facebook loves connecting with people, ha ha. And then I would like mention something about them or just say like, love connecting with like-minded people or something. So you can say that too. I typically do message, but I did get feedback from some people that they haven't been getting as much a response as when they friend them first. I don't know. So you can do whatever works for you. And then I like to remove the ones that I'm not going to use. And then you can always just refresh it and a few more should pop up. The other thing that you can do is actually search for friends. And I know a lot of people will say that, well, mine doesn't list my current city or my high school or whatever. The reason why yours might not say your current city is because you don't publicly have that displayed on your Facebook. If I don't have that I live in Boston as my current city publicly for everyone to see, then this section won't let me connect with people who um, by the current city. So I personally have my hometown, I have my current city, I have my high school, I have my college, I have my like page listed as my employer. Um, so those all pop up for me. So if you're, if you're not seeing that and you want to have it, then you need to make that public on your page. So you could simply, you can search anything. Like you can search, I mean, like I could search, search PWC, like that's where Pat works or used to work. So I could search PWC and it's going to bring up anyone in New York City that I have a few mutual friends with. So I could go through and add these people. You can do literally any company. You can't do like an occupation like nurse. It has to be specific school of a or a hospital or something like that. And it can be things just like Lululemon um, and you can search anything. And what pops up for me will be different from what pops up for you because it's based on your mutual friends that you have on Facebook. So it's not going to necessarily be the same people, but always check the friends and make sure it's not um, one of another Team Boom coach or another coach that you know. So I like to do that. And then another option is searching pages. So I could search you, like- you show them again how you got, got to this page? Oh yeah, so you just hit your little person up here where it says friend request. And then at the bottom it says see all. So the top will be the friend request that, to respond to and then it'll have people you may know. And then the search on the right. Yep, and your people you may know it might take a little bit for it to start being people that would actually relate to you. Um, mine's kind of weird right now, but usually it's like people that are kind of similar because it's based on who you have recently been adding. So, but again, like the biggest one that I do are searching like different companies. And you, what I do is I go to Google and I'll just type in like Boston fitness centers, New York city fitness centers. Like you can type in top um, corporate offices in Chicago, like whatever, and then type those in here if you want so that you have some options of things. And you can you know, search different colleges, different current cities and stuff like that. So that's one way of connecting with people. Another is to simply go to pages that you like. So I could type in Lululemon. Is this the one? Okay. Go to the Lululemon page. And I could just see who's liking their post. So here's 24 people liked this post. So I could go through and just, you know, look through some of the people and you could add them as a friend. So that's another way of going through and doing it. So how long do you spend on this during the power hour? 10 minutes. 10 minutes of? Adding and messaging people. 10, 10 minutes just to connect and find new people. Yeah. Cool. It might be less if you're not, so if you're not going to message them right away, then I would do five minutes finding new people and then five minutes of going to your friends on Facebook to message them. But you can do them both together if you want. But for my, some reason, this isn't popping up, but there's re, one that says recently added and it sorts it by the most recently added. So you could go and message your friends that accepted you from yesterday. Cool. Does that make sense? Okay. I didn't know that. You can, you can go to your profile, click on friends, and sort your friends by recently added. Yeah, it's, it'll say like all your friends, and then it'll say like by your college, whatever, and there's one that says recently added, and the ones at the top are the most recent. Nice, that's cool. Yep, um, okay, so we would have done that for 10 minutes. The next thing um, is to check in with all your groups. So everyone should be checking in their coach group every single day. You should be checking in there, liking and commenting, welcoming the new coaches that come in. 
Um, if you were a new coach coming in and you, no one was liking your post, like that's not very nice. We want to be very welcoming to the new coaches. So I just like to emphasize that to make sure you are liking and saying welcome to the new coaches that come in. Um, commenting on things, sharing tips and whatnot in the coaching group, just checking out to see what's in there. So the coaching group, definitely. Um, any of your challenge groups, you should be actively engaging and commenting and liking and stuff on what you're tagging your challengers. So those are like the big ones are your coach group and your challenge groups. Um, if you have like a free group running and then if you're in a training group. I personally, every month will go through my groups and leave groups that I don't need to be in. So I try and keep it to the groups that I really only need to be in so I'm not scattered everywhere. And then you can, um, I'm pretty sure most of you probably know this, but on the left-hand side is where all your groups are listed. You can um, rearrange them and put them in order from the most important to least important. So if I'm in a group, you can choose to add it to your favorites. So this is one of my favorites, but I, if it weren't, it would say add to favorites. So that means it's going to pop up at the top. Um, and I also always turn off these notifications so that I don't get notified on every single post, just ones that I actually interact on. Um, and you can rearrange them. So if you click on these little dots, you can rearrange and pull these in whatever order you want so that you could have your, you know, your, coach, your challenge groups and then your coach group and your training group at the top. So for five minutes at least, depending on how many groups you are in, it might take a little bit more or less, but about five to 10 minutes of going in your groups. And um, what I like to do is keep a Google Doc of videos. So it's just like the title would be videos. So if I go into a coach group or um, something and I see a great video that I wanna watch but I don't have time to right now, I'll copy the link and put it into my document and then just title it like, inviting tips or whatever that video was about. And then when I'm, you know, cooking or whatever, I can watch those videos um, at a later time if I don't have time during right then. So that is that step. The next step is interest groups. And interest groups, once you have them set up, really won't take that long. Um, so I created an interest group for anyone that's in my downline that's actively working the business. And then I have a, an interest group that are for anyone that's in one of my sneak peek groups or have been in my sneak peek groups. So people who have been interested in coaching. And then I have one that's just like prospects. Um, it would be a good idea if you had one for like your challengers too. So Can you show that Amy. Yeah, that? and I made a video on my Facebook that goes step by step on how to create interest groups. So your, I can, your, what's that? On your YouTube? Yep. It's like one of the first videos. It says the power of interest groups. Cool. I can grab it real quick. So it's only like 10 minutes so you guys can watch it after the call. So for those that haven't heard that term, interest group is a mini news feed that you create. You get to pick who shows up in that interest group news feed. Hi. Yeah, so I'm gonna share that in the chat right now so you can save it and watch it after. Um, it's also nice for like, for us as coaches, when we have a ton of friends on Facebook, you can create interest groups for like your high school friends to make sure you, you're not missing what they're posting because sometimes your news feed gets cluttered uh, with all the other beach body coaches and things. Yeah. So I simply, and it, you can like, again, I put it as one of my favorites. So you have to choose to have it up here and then I have it at the top. So like I can check a newsfeed and this is only going to be my coaches in my downline that are actively working the business. So that way I'm not cluttered by looking at everyone else's news feeds. I'm simply looking at only the coaches in my downline and what they're posting. Um, Wait, and then I also go up for a sec. Up. Yeah. There was a picture right there. Chris. That look, I was like, that looks like my apartment. <laughs> yeah. I sneaked it in there. It looks a little sloppy. That's good. <laughs> I got this roommate for the week. He's, I don't know. He's not too tidy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that way I'm not like, sitting and wasting time, not wasting time, but spending so much time like going to each coach and looking at their page. So I have it all set 
to only look at them. And then I have anyone that has been in um, a sneak peek group. So these are all the people that are actually currently in my sneak peek group. So I can check and like and comment on their news feeds. Um, and then again, like you could have one for your challengers, um, people who are actively in challengers or they've been in it a couple months ago, but they never signed up as a coach. So I spend, and I just put it on there as two minutes, but you can just spend, you know, two to five minutes going through liking and commenting on the posts in your interest groups. The next step is um, happy birthdays. So this is like something that's really simple and it takes two seconds, is I just go to the events tab. And what I do is, hover over the people's birthday. And I don't write it on their wall unless them like not actively talking with them, but I would um, like hover over, I can show you for instance hers. I actually say like, hey Christy, wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Are you doing anything fun today? Thank you, yes, I'm going to the gym. So like then, that was actually like a perfect thing for me to like now talk to her about like, oh, like what did you do for your workout or whatever. So, and it's just a nice thing to do. It can start a conversation. Um, so I like to actually personally message them and just say happy birthday and ask them like what they're doing. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. I mean, we, in this hour, we can, we wrote down names of people that we're already friends with. We reached out and connected with them. We followed up with people in our inbox. We responded to messages that were waiting for us. We connected with new people, added new people on Facebook. Um, we checked in all of our groups. We um, went to our interest groups and liked and commented on people. And we said happy birthday to people whose birthday it was. Other things you should do daily that aren't in your power hour, but you should be doing them anyway, is personal development, which you can do that when you're driving in the car, on a podcast, at night before you go to bed, when you're cleaning the kitchen or cooking dinner or whatever. Um, working out and drinking your Shakeology, those are givens that you should be setting time for anyway. And posting on social media. I personally like to sit down on Sundays and just think about what do I want to post about that week. Obviously, a lot of my posts just come at the spur of the moment thinking about it. But if you are really tight on time, it is a good idea to sit down on Sunday and say, all right, I want to post about coaching. What do I want to post about it? When am I going to post it? I want to post about a 21-day fixed meal. When am I going to make a good meal or whatever? So like sitting down and figuring out what you're going to post for the week ahead so that you have it planned. You can just copy the text, take a picture or if you don't already have it. Another thing I used to do, like, um, people are like, I don't have time to make a pretty Shakeology, or I don't have time to do this or that. On Sometimes on the weekends, I would make, like, a vanilla Shakeology and a chocolate Shakeology, blend it up, and then I would dump it in a cup and put toppings on it, and then I would take a picture of it, and then I would dump it into another cup and put different toppings on it and save those for later times. I was always, I wouldn't post, I was always drinking my Shakeology anyway, but then I would have a cool picture that would go along with it if you're... And I actually made a video about that also on the YouTube about how to post when you're busy. So those are all the things. Are there any questions? I was hoping um, some of the coaches that have done one of these, like group uh, Zoom power hours together, or maybe one of the coaches that led one of them could just share like what they like about it. Just like 30 seconds. What? So anyone who's gotten on one of my power hour calls, you can just unmute yourself and share about it. And if you've continued with them since. I can say really quickly, um, I've been on one of them and I, the, the best part was just going through names. Even if it's like Amy said, five minutes, because at 10 minutes, you were just like going on forever. But um, it was a huge idea for me because then it saved me the kind of scramble of like, who am I going to talk to tonight and the overthinking. So just being disciplined and just writing names was that was a huge takeaway for me. Nice. Awesome. Anybody else? I'll share. The, like the timer idea is a really good idea because I like I usually use a timer and I'm just like oh I'll just follow up for like five minutes and then I look at the clock and it's 25 minutes later so you kind of get off track so a big thing I got out of it was um, the timer 
And then I like doing it in the environment too, just because you kind of have like other people you're doing it with. It just kind of feels more fun. So I would recommend you guys hopping on one of those or trying it out. Awesome. Anybody else that has done it or led one? I've led a couple of this week and I like the group aspect of it. And it also keeps you accountable. Like I've been posting what I'm like the power hours schedule ahead of time so that people can write it down and then they know that they're going to do their power hour at seven and get on there together. And then it also gave, you know, some coaches ways to use Facebook differently the way, you know, so, so it gave people good tips, but just the like planning it out and getting it done together. And after that hour, you're like, wow, I can't believe how much time I did compared to just going into a coach group and like talking with all my coaches because that's what we tend to do. But what we should be doing is like prospecting and inviting new people and starting new relationships. So that's a big part of what, what this is about. Yeah, that's awesome. It gets you to show up. Number one, that's the most important thing. And it really keeps you on task. You're not like spending your power hour going through your news feed. You're sticking to your 10 minutes, boom, moving to the next thing, boom. Very productive, getting stuff done. Love it. Anybody else? Oh, go ahead. I was on Amy's and then I run, we do some in my group, in my smaller group. Um, it's nice because you're there with your own coaches. You play the music and you have the timer set. So it is really focused. And you kind of get into a rhythm of doing it. So after that hour is up, sometimes, you know, when we get off of the live one, we continue on our own. Awesome. Anybody else? It's good. Amy, how would you, what would you say as far as recommending how to um, get other coaches on board with you? Like say there's a coach that, um, you know, wants to get on a group power hour. What would you recommend to them? I think it's important for everyone new or old to like, just reach out to someone like for a success partner or whatever. And you don't have to have like 18 people on the call. You just you need two people. So just setting a time with someone or posting in the coach group saying, Hey, I really want to set up a, a power hour. These are the times this week that I'm going to do them. Like who wants to get on them with me? So you can, you know, kind of do it that way. So, and that holds you accountable because you don't want to like bail on someone if you set that time. So you're, you know, it's help, helping you stay accountable to an hour each day. Yep. Makes you show up. Yeah. Cool. And then as far as like a leader, like, like yourself, Amy, how do you, what do you do? Do you like post? I think Annie already mentioned it. She said she'll post a schedule of the time she's going to be doing her power hours and then anyone can like sign up. Is that what you do? Yeah, show you. yeah, let me show you. Yeah, I posted times that I was available. So I had like three times and then Amy had like three times and then we just both together, like let both of our, our coaches jump on it. So. Three is, times a day? A yeah. week. Like I did one on Monday, one on Tuesday and one on like Wednesday. Yeah, I did this. I ran a poll on in my group. And I had these as the dates that I was going to do them. And then people signed up. So I kind of had an idea of how many people were going to sign up. And then I just posted the links to the um, power hour in the chat. And if you want to run a poll in your group, you just go to the top and it says, let me get to the discussion. It says create a poll. And then you can just like ask a question and then it just adds different options. If you guys didn't know that. Great. Amy, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. How, did your power hour, how was your power hour different when you were focusing more on Instagram than Facebook? Um, I personally am doing a lot more on Facebook than I am on Instagram. So for me, I still do a little bit of the 531 on Instagram, but that's just kind of when I have time, but I'm doing more on Facebook. I personally just think that it's easier to connect with people on Facebook. As soon as you add them as a friend and they accept, you're friends and they're going to see everything in your newsfeed. Um, it's just easier to, have, easier to have a conversation. Not that I'm not doing Instagram, but you could add that in there if you didn't want to do the Facebook part. Um, Amy, I have a quick question too. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
usually I go through like the friend list and then, you know, I friend all the mutual friends and I'm like, Hey, looks like we have, you know, a lot of mutual friends, blah, blah, blah with that part. When you go into like pages, say for example, you're searching like planet fitness. Are you inviting those people to send you a friend request in those like pages or are you automatically sending them a friend request instead of saying like, send me a friend request if you're interested kind of conversation. Yeah. So, so I'm adding them as a friend and then I usually message them and say, Hey, I happen to see you on a Lululemon page. Um, I love Lululemon too. Like, um, obviously, you know, you're into working out. Like, are you a big, are you big into yoga or something? We, I have to laugh now because we are doing a live power before and I was trying to do it on like whole foods and it was like awkward. Cause I was like, I like the grocery store. And then I was like, this is a dumb page to do it on. But like doing pages you like and stuff are definitely better. And I like mentioned that. So then I would kind of know like, oh, this person I actually connected with on the Lululemon page or whatever. So, so you feel like doing that's like increased your, um, like as far as Instagram, like you, do you feel like your numbers are being increased as far as like um, contacts doing it that way instead of just like inviting people uh -huh. saying like, Looks like we have similar, you know, that old thing looks like we have similar interests, send me a friend request, blah, blah, blah. Like you feel I like know, it's- I'm actually adding them as a friend. Okay. Yeah. I need to do that. Do you remember that like 10 minute window where you're connecting, finding and connecting with new people? You could also be like on your phone, finding and connecting with new people on Instagram. Yeah. Whatever you Cool. Oh yeah, that's actually a good question. Someone asked, how long do you let your outstanding friend request sit there? You are, you do want to go back and delete friend requests of people who haven't accepted because Facebook doesn't like to have outstanding friend requests sitting there. So the way to do that, um, you can do it just like once a week or whatever, but you could just go to your friends again um, and then view sent friends, you view sent requests. So these are the people that are sitting here that haven't accepted my friend request. So I need to actually like go through and delete these because I haven't done it. So all you would just do is, you know, hit over and hit cancel requests because you don't want like a hundred sitting in there if they're not accepting it. How do you, can you tell how long they've been sitting there? No, you can't. So I would just like, I don't know. You could, I'm not sure. Yeah, it doesn't tell you. I, so I just know that these aren't that long because this is from like literally two, two days ago. I think that's a fake person. The bikini, Who? the bikini girl. Oh, Elizabeth is her friend too. I fell for that. Everyone is. I was like, damn, she's fake. Is she, is she fake? Yeah. Oh wait, that's Elizabeth that I'm looking at. I'm like, wait, we have a lot of mutual friends. Wait, why do you think she's fake? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Matt Titeo. <laughs> <laughs> I went to her profile. She's got like one profile picture ever. And it's like a day old and it's like one like. Oh. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> got yeah. excited for nothing. Oh yeah, she is really new. Hey Pat. Yeah. Um, this power hour thing is so great. And I did it once with Amy and it went fast and I, I'm obviously not prepared to run one yet. But I, I think it's like an awesome idea for all the teams. And I was just wondering, is there a way you think maybe we could set something up where we could practice, have some people run it team wide for a while till we all get used to it and then, and then break off? Yeah, for sure. Um, we can like talk about it in the diamond group on Facebook about like how we want to go about leading those. Um, and then like coaches that aren't diamonds that just want to like, do a power hour with like one or two other people, they could also just kind of comment in their coach group and say, Hey, like this is really the only hour I can do my power hour. Does anyone else want to do it during this time too? And they can kind of do their own little thing, you know, two or three people. But as far as like the bigger ones, we can, uh, we can talk more about like leading those in the diamond group. How we want to go about that. Okay. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, just because when I only did it once with Amy, I didn't get a chance with Andrea. I messed up that link. But, um, you know, because it's so efficient the way they're running it right now, and it's, you know, if someone just says, hey, you want to do a power hour right now, they're not going to have the timing down the way they did it. 
So I think it would be good for everyone to have that opportunity to, you know, practice a few, you know, a little bit, get it down, and then they can either go off with someone or run their own. Right. In uh, the yeah, yeah. We, we could, like, in the Diamond Group, give times that we are available to do them and then share the link. And then you can give that to your, maybe like your team so that they can get on. Yeah, My Zoom can post like 500 or 50 people, I think. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, we could do that until like the diamonds feel comfortable, maybe breaking off mm -hmm. and doing them themselves. Yeah. I mean, I sent the list in there of the different breakdowns with the minutes um, in that chat. So. It should be, a, that should be helpful, but yeah. And then I just use my phone and I just set a timer and I would be like, all right, ready, go. And then the timer would go off and we would play music during it. And then I'd say, okay, time up. Okay, next step, go. Then the timer would go off and then I'd set the alarm and then go. So. Yep. Just need to practice a few rounds. You'll be <laughs> fine, Terry. <laughs> You'll get it. It was also nice on the calls to like meet other people on our team that I've like seen on Facebook, but haven't like talked to. And that was kind of nice to see like other people. And I've had a couple people when I got on the calls, like they became accountability partners. Like they were like, let's branch off and do this together. So even if you have like two people, you can do this together. This might be a question for Chris. Like any recommendations for songs to play during the power hour? Dude, I've been locked in your basement, man. When are you going to unchain me? I've got 200 <laughs> invites. I haven't even seen one piece. Right. Right. you got to get your team volume up a little bit. I just did Pandora. I have, just do, I have the tiger. It's all you need. I have the tiger on repeat. Before Christmas, oh, yes. I need everyone listen to Christmas songs. <laughs> hey, I got a quick question. Um, you know, when you're, when you're cold... Um, when you're adding somebody from like a fitness group, you know, on Facebook, uh, what's your immediate thing that you're wanting to message them uh, to get their attention? You know, um, you're just going on like, uh, you know, I see we have a lot in common. I'd like to get to know you. I mean, what's like the basic rundown of a message you would send somebody? I just say like, hey, name, I kept seeing you pop up as a suggested friend. I figured I'd reach out. And then, I mean, you can even leave it as that, or you could say something like, I see you work at this, or I see you do that, or something. It's funny, I did this call with like a 10-star um, a diamond coach, and one of the guys on there was like, how do I message girls so it doesn't sound creepy? And she was like, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, yeah. I, I watched, I watched the um, Scotty Hobbs uh, video. I can't remember which one it was, but he um, he talked about trying to make uh, make them sound like your best friend or tell, like you're talking to your sister. Yeah. So just to make it like the least awkward as possible. So I'd like that. Another thing that I was telling my coach, some of my coaches, was that when you when you friend request people and Facebook will take their friends and like find more mutual friends of their friends. So if you find example is I found a yoga studio in my local area and I friended a couple of the people and then it kept suggesting that I'm friends with like more people that go to this yoga studio. So yeah. when I'm sending mutual friends, like requests to people, I might have eight mutual friends in common with somebody, but I don't really know that person or the other eight people. So if you find like one local area like that or something local, like a gym or something, you could find a lot of people that are into the health and fitness and Facebook will start to like optimize your friend request to suggest that you're friends with them. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So anything, anything else? reach out to them like right away as soon as as soon as you like they get the acceptance you reach out to them like right away you don't let them sit and like watch you for a second that's why i was saying before like it's up to you to like some people said that they've been having better success waiting and then a friending or messaging them i used to do that now i've just been kind of messaging and saying like hey I kept seeing you pop up as a suggested friend, but you definitely can wait. And then, like I said, when you go to your friends, it says like recently added, and then you can work that way. So it's really whatever. 
you want. So it's kind of like uh, Instagram. You're you're kind of like getting right to it because when they add you from Instagram, you, you know that they're kind of interested in what we're doing already. Um, but with Facebook, you really have to work on building more of a relationship with that person before you can get personal and, you know, talk to them about the programs. Is that kind of... I don't really know if I had like a specific question for it, but just kind of a comment for like the difference of the two. Yeah, I totally makes sense. I agree. So I guess it's kind of cool in a way because uh, you get to actually uh, be personal with, with them a little bit easier. Yeah, you get to know them better. You get to figure out if there's someone that you have things in common with, um, someone that would be fun to do a 21 day challenge with. I try to make sure like I'm not trying to get anybody and everyone into my 21 day challenges. Like I want to get good people that the other people in my 21 day challenges would benefit from them. You know, people that I would have fun working with in a 21 day challenge, people that eventually I think would be fun to work with as coaches. And so I take that time to really get to know them, and see what they're into. And that helps me figure out if I would want to work with them. Hashtag quality over quantity. The other thing about Perfect. Facebook versus Instagram, I think, is that with Facebook, it already tracks it for you. It tracks the people for you, and it keeps all your conversation. But Instagram, like, you have to keep this really complex spreadsheet of everyone of what they said and whether or not they might be interested later. And, you know, so there's so much more that you have to do when it comes to tracking for Instagram, which is why I'm really intrigued by everything you've said, Amy, with Facebook. So thank you. Um, if I do, you're welcome. If I do invites and stuff on Instagram, I don't track anything to be honest. I don't know if I should, but I just like will connect with people and then like in hopes that they follow me. Most of the people that I connect with on Instagram, like I'll, if I am talking to them, I'll like comment something like if you're interested in connecting on Facebook, it's like hard to talk here. You can send me a friend request on Facebook, but I don't really have like ongoing conversations in there, but you can do the private messages on Instagram. That's what I do. I just, I do a lot of private messaging on Instagram and you can, and you used to have to send a photo to do a private message on Instagram. And now you don't have to do the photo. You can just message them private, just like you would on Facebook. So like I, you, because of Instagram, I'm constantly every day getting new followers and new people interacting on liking my photos. So I'll go to their page to see what they're like. And if it's someone I have things in common with, I'll comment on one of their photos and, on, and, I'll, and I'll send them a private message too. But I'm selective on like who I send message to and who I comment on their photos. It's, usually, it's people that I think would be fun to work with and eventually just to connect with and someone that would be interesting just to follow on Instagram and then see where it goes. But I do that private message all the time now. Yeah. Do you get, do you so get a lot of people to actually reply? Yeah, I get a ton. I have like a ton of conversations going on through the Instagram private messaging and then eventually like move it over to Facebook. I have trouble getting people to reply unless I say in a comment on one of their pictures that I've been talking to them on, hey, I just sent you a private message and like direct them there. Gotcha. I don't always see mine. Like sometimes I'll like all of a sudden it'll pop up like the orange thing and it was like from five days ago. Yeah, you got to like, um, sometimes you go there and you, ex you have to accept it. And yeah. Then it shows up. But yeah, I go, to my, I go to my Instagram inbox like every day. Instagram is not the best technology out there coming from technology company. <laughs> yeah. I just, just love have them Instagram. Uh, like, like a BFF application. <laughs> yeah. Did you hear that? <laughs> I, didn't, I missed it, no. No, uh, it's like, can we just have them fill out like a BFF application so yeah. we can just like skip all that? Yeah, I'll create, we'll create a Google Doc. Yeah. <laughs> and they meet all the requirements so they can add me. <laughs> right. I like it. I'm into it. <laughs> Might free some people out there. Oh, yeah, I have a quick question. Uh, so you were number two. Congratulations. Um, who's number one? Out of guys. What's that? Oh, for guys? Uh, Scotty yes. Hobbs. Of course. Scotty. The man, the myth, the legend. Yeah. That's pretty awesome, Pat. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Wow. Team. Team effort. Um, 
I, I recognized all the um, coaches that are currently uh, star diamonds and above coaches. Um, there's one coach that's not currently a star diamond, but is one of the team boom originals and one of the leaders um, and someone that gave me such a huge spark in the beginning and really kind of like showed me a lot of things as far as like how this business model works. So uh, I just want to recognize and give a round of applause for Joe Policino, who I know is going to crush it in 2016. The man, the myth, the legend. That's the real man, the myth, the legend, Joe Policino right there. Um, I think that's a good uh, spot to close on. Uh, let's get a little boom on three. Amy, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to crushing these group power hours in 2016. I think it's going to get us to really show up to our job and actually like stay on path for our hour. Thank you. All right, guys. Let's crush 2016. Boom on three. And we'll get out of here. One, two, three. Boom. 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 2015's in the books. 2016, we're coming at you. See you guys. Bye. Let me out of this basement, Pat, man.